So welcome to a new episode of Paul Takes Photos and today is going to be a very interesting episode because Sony has just released the Sony ZV-1 F. Yes, it's an F version and the way this has been released is that this camera has been made for vloggers and content creators and it's aimed at moving people from their smartphones into cameras. Now, where have I heard this before? So I'm a bit skeptical. So what I think here in this episode, let's just have a look at the Sony ZV-1F, what it really has. First of all, the sensor. It's a 20 MB one inch sensor, which basically is the same as on the Sony ZV-1. This camera, pretty much similar. The design itself is also pretty much spec'd out based on the Sony RX100 series. Those are photography centric cameras. The ZVs are film centric cameras. That is the first thing. The price point of the ZV-1F will be around 500 bucks, which compared to flagship phones, uh, whether they're Apple, Samsung, Xiaomi, Huawei's, they normally are between 900 and uh, 1800 bucks, depending on what you take. And they have a life, basically product life of about two to three years. These cameras go for about five years. So it's very cheap. Now, the one thing here about it is that what I've seen of the Sony ZV-1F is that it's pretty much a stripped down version of the ZV. It has a 20 millimeter fixed uh, lens, which is great for vlogging. But once you start recording in 4K, you'll see on every camera you have a crop, so things get a bit narrower. So in reality, this is more like a 24 megapixel camera, which is ideal for having it like this, like a broken elbow. So that is pretty good. That said, on the ZV-1, the original one, if you buy the Ulanzi lens, you can see the episode here, wide angle lens. You can also get an 18 millimeters, which is even wider, even with the ridiculous 4K crop. So I'm already seeing that the ZV-1F is a pretty good idea for people who have never ever shot with a camera, but after four months, most of you will probably upgrade. Tell me what you think in the links below. Additionally, what the ZV-1 has, the original one has multiple film profiles, whereas the ZV-1F doesn't, and that's a big thing. So yes, you can shoot your videos, but you don't have all the log profiles that you normally need to color grade or color code. Additionally, the stabilization seems to be electronic and the lens itself, you can zoom, I think about four or eight times with it, but all in all, you'll still be uh, on the 20 millimeter focal range, which is great for vlogging, let's say talking heads, but once you're in a studio or you're somewhere and you want to do a bit more, that's gonna be a bit of an issue. Additionally, the battery in it is the same disappointing battery as you have here, which lasts up for about an hour, hour and a half, if you're lucky, if you're shooting 4K, that's gonna be a problem. One thing the Sony ZV-1F does do is photography and it's got some of the latest tech there, the product, backgrounds, all that kind of stuff you can make blurry, but unfortunately it's only JPEG. And JPEG is the format which uh, you basically shoot and it does have detail, but not the same as in RAW. And most flagship phones do have RAW capabilities, which means that if you go editing, you can bring up highlights, color code much better because you simply have a RAW file. Yeah, it's the RAW print, it's unedited, it's full of detail and information which you can then edit. If you only shoot JPEGs, yeah, you're gonna have to rely on the Sony algorithm, which normally tends to work well. Um, what I've also seen of this camera, it apparently is even smaller than the ZV-1, which is if you have a big hands, that's going to be a problem. And additionally, I think for vlogging, it is still even, okay, there's a cage on here, but still, if you put it down into your pocket, you're still going to notice the actual lens, which over here is a little pancake lens, retracts inwards. This is a fixed lens like you have on many uh, compact uh, shooting cameras. So I'm not so sure it's going to be that pocketable. Now you're saying, Paul, you're thrashing the ZV-1F without having tried it. Yes, I'm not thrashing it. I'm just basically being very critical. There are alternatives for vlogging out there. One of them is the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. It is still one of the most inconspicuous ways of vlogging and it costs you the creator combo all included. It is gonna cost you about $450. You can see the links in here below. And if you wanna see a comparison between these two, there's an episode here, link in the description below. Alternatively, you can also start using cameras like the Insta360 
uh, One X3, the two GoPros, or um, DJI Osmo Action, the latest one, the number three, you can now try. And all of those are roughly around the same price point or cheaper. My problem with the camera, the way I see it, I know the limitations on the ZV-1, but if you strip it of its raw capabilities, you strip it of its uh, cinematic color profiles or logs, you're gonna get a very basic product for 500 euros. It will probably work for you for the first half a year and then you have to upgrade anyways.